Hello, everyone. We are here today to present uh, our learnings and the progress in the DSF project development. In the last OCP summit, we have introduced DSF as a technology. Uh, we talked about the architecture benefits, and then also discussed few design options uh, that we could take in the implementation. Uh, since then, we have made a good progress. Um, we have a reasonably working system where we could focus on DSF network behavior um, in the AIML workloads. Um, so this presentation will focus on all our findings, analysis, and overall the next step for the project. Um, we plan to contribute all our project work back to the Sonic community. So we will take all the uh, technical design conversation as part of that process. We don't need to necessarily spend time in discussing a specific design implementation details in this presentation. I am Mani. I lead the Sonic Engineering team uh, in Cisco. Today, in the agenda slide, today uh, I'll kick off the session um, with a DSF introduction, um, and then probably recap what we discussed in the last OCP summit. Then, you know, Prasant will talk about all of our uh, findings and recommendations and set of uh, DSF network behavior along with test environment and the benchmarking tools that we have used to um, study the DSF network behavior. Then we'll wrap it up with a summary uh, and as well as the next step for this project. DSF as a technology uh, distributed scheduled fabric, it is intent to create a lossless fabric by scheduling traffic between two endpoints. Thus, uh, maximizing the efficiency of the network infrastructure, resulting in uh, maximizing, ma maximizing the utilization of the endpoint uh, processing power. Here, the endpoints could be GPU, CPU, NIC, or uh, other form of the servers. Um, in, if you look at the Sonic, uh, or if you look at the modular or a chassis system, um, Sonic already supports or the modular system uh, uses some of this technique in the backplane. Uh, Sonic, support, Sonic is supported today in the chassis environment, so it has all the design construct that we could leverage and build this cloth fabric in a distributed manner. In the DSF topology, you have spine nodes, which are responsible for all the leaf connectivity, and you have the leaf nodes, which is responsible for all the host connectivity. Um, all of these nodes in, in DSF runs Sonic, and they are independently managed. Uh, and we have used internal logical port to establish the in-band communication channel between all of these uh, nodes. And we have talked about few design options uh, to kind of distribute the state and config information across um, all the nodes in this cluster. Uh, as we take it, this conversation in the community, we could find some other options. Uh, but for now, currently leaning towards the, our favorite protocol, BGP, to share the state and the config information across the cluster. And PFC and RDMA functions, related functions, are the key um, ingredients to get this network working and make it lossless inside the fabric, as well as keeping the application working without a backup. Uh, those elements would work end-to-end -end as well. Uh, so with that, I'll let Prashant take it through the, the DSF findings. Yeah, thanks, Mani. Uh, my name is Prashant. Uh, I'll walk you guys through uh, the process that we have gone through in you know, benchmarking and, and figuring out how this fabric uh, compares against uh, you know, any of our traditional Ethernet fabrics. Right? Just to recap, uh, I mean, uh, this is a two-class fabric, right? Uh, if you look at a traditional Ethernet fabric, uh, from the leaf to the spine, you have multiple links. And any time ingress packets are coming in from the hose, towards the leaf and, and trying to go out to the remote ends, the leaf would 
uh, you know, pick a link based on an ECMP hash, uh, and then you know, we'll pick that link, and that link pretty much carries all of the traffic for that flow, for the life of the flow, uh, to the destination. Right? Just to uh, uh, make sure you uh, understand the difference with DSF here, uh, on DSF, there is no hashing. Right? Uh, every time a leaf needs to send a packet, it actually sprays the packets across all the available links to all the spines that are connecting to the remote leaves. Uh, that's uh, the main uh, difference here, right? Uh, all right. Uh, so let's talk about uh, what does it take uh, to actually uh, study and figure out and understand how the network behaves uh, for, for an AI ML workload. Uh, so this is a typical uh, setup that you would usually have uh, with compute servers uh, connecting to your leaves and then uh, one or two stage uh, spines, right? Uh, so here uh, in the lab, uh, we had built two setups, uh, each with 128 uh, hosts, uh, two spines and four leaves. Uh, the connectivity between the hosts and the uh, leaves is a 200 gig uh, uh, link to each of the hosts, and each leaf was uh, connected with 32 uh, hosts. Uh, this was replicated ac across uh, four of the hosts here, uh, four of the uh, leaves. Right? So the ingress bandwidth coming in into the leaf is around 6.4 tbps. Right? Now, at a, uh, from the leaf towards the spine, you have eight links to each of the spines. Uh, each is a 400 gig uh, uh, optics uh, running in a 2 by 200 mode here, uh, a total of one, uh, 6.4 tbps again towards the uh, rest of the uh, network. So the ingress is 6.4 tbps, egress is 6.4 tbps. It's a fully balanced uh, uh, leaf uh, topology here. Uh, there is no oversubscription of any, any sorts here. Uh, so just to call out on the cable lens, right? Uh, from host to the leaf, we had three meter cables. From leaf to spine, we had seven meter cables. We were looking to use longer cables as well uh, in our study to uh, understand how the cable length actually impacts uh, your, your uh, job performance. All right. Uh, so uh, let me restate the problem statement here, right? Uh, what are we attempting? We are trying to understand how these fabrics uh, actually behave when you're running an AML workload. Uh, we've heard multiple times that traditional fabrics don't actually work very well, traditional Ethernet-based fabrics, right? You have all this ECMP hash collisions. You cannot really fully utilize all of the bandwidth that's available on the leaf, uh, uh, right? So how do you figure out and how do you uh, understand what's going on in the network uh, uh, to uh, really uh, you know, pinpoint the problems and then you know, uh, solve those problems, right? Uh, so we needed a set of tools. Uh, you could go get all sorts of GPUs and hook them up, but that's just you know, cost prohibitive, right? You won't be able to really uh, scale that uh, to, to be able to uh, you know, benchmark your networks uh, day in, day out, right? Uh, so uh, how do you uh, actually figure out uh, uh, a good tool set in order to accomplish that goal, right? So here is a list of tools that we went through. Uh, some of them are open source, or, or almost all of them are open source here, right? They enable you to uh, simulate AI ML collectives, all to all, all reduce, all gather, whole bunch of collectives that are out there. Uh, these tools enable you to simulate it uh, uh, and then generate traffic as if it is a real AI ML workload that's uh, uh, being uh, run across the network. Right? Uh, so there is perf test, which is which is not really an AML tool. It's just a you know bare bones RDMA throughput latency test tool. Uh, uh, you have Param OSU. Uh, uh, these tools can run in both CPU and GPU mode, uh, but for this particular test, we did not have any GPUs, so we were running purely in CPU. Uh, so we ran into a problem where some of the tools were not scaling very well, if, especially in a single job scenario. Uh, we could not get the tool to push line rate on all the hosts. Uh, so we had to do a little bit of orchestration ourselves and come up with a, a slightly different tool, which is this all-to-all -all perf test. Uh, I mean, it sounds fancy, but there's not, not much to it. Uh, all that it does is it orchestrates across the 32 uh, hosts or 128 hosts uh, across the cluster 
uh, and then make sure all the hosts are actually starting the streams of all to all, uh, uh, which is similar to how a all to all uh, uh, training workload actually uh, does it. Uh, so, uh, now what do you uh, look at in order to understand what's going on, right? So, uh, we had uh, uh, telemetry at every stage. Uh, we had telemetry on the routers. We had telemetry on the host. Uh, we were looking at uh, uh, link utilization. We were looking at packets uh, uh, sent, received. We were looking at pause frames. Uh, we were look looking at drop packets. Almost every aspect of the, of the network path was uh, being looked at using telemetry. Uh, you literally need a time series of this data if you ever want to go back and look, hey, what went wrong with your job, right? There is no way you could ever debug a problem with looking at instantaneous counters. You have to have a time series of all of your telemetry data available to you. Uh, this is one uh, capture that I'm sharing here. Uh, the left top is uh, from a DSF cluster. Uh, the reading is, uh, the throughput of the NIC on each of the hosts. The right one is throughput of the NIC on the host on, on, a, on, on, on the cluster, which is in the ECMP mode. Uh, you can clearly see here that on, the, on a scheduled fabric, the hosts are able to reach full line rate, right? almost uh, close to 180 Gbps. Uh, the numbers here don't reflect 200 Gbps because the, some of the headers are not accounted here. Uh, so 186 is the best you can get out of it. Right, so in DSF uh, case, we reach close to 180. While in ECMP, you can clearly see that each of the hosts had at a different rate. Uh, now, why is that, right? Uh, that pretty much is uh, what hash collisions look like. Uh, the links that are sharing a egress link from the, um, I'm sorry, the hosts that are sharing uh, uh, the egress link from the leaf to spine uh, will be restricted to the bandwidth of the link uh, uh, that's available. Uh, what does that mean, right? So two hosts are pumping, let's say, uh, 200 gig flows into uh, the leaf, and the leaf has a 200 gig link or a 400 gig link, uh, two uh, 200 gig links to the spine, right? In that scenario, if those two flows from the host get properly hashed, then they will each go on different uh, uplinks. But if there's a hash collision, two of these flows will share the same link. Uh, as a result, one 200 gig uplink gets over-provisioned or overloaded. Uh, as a result, the host actually uh, slows down. Now, how do you know the host has slowed down? Uh, we went and looked at the PSC, PFC pause frames in this particular scenario. The, the bottom graph uh, reflects that. Uh, bottom left is capture taken on the DSF uh, cluster. Uh, the bottom right is uh, taken on the ECMP. This is aggregate Rx PFC uh, rate uh, that was observed. On, on DSF, what we observe is pretty minimal back pressure, uh, right? It's around 550 uh, uh, or so uh, Rx pause frame rate. While on ECMP, it's just huge, right? 18 million pause frames where the ECMP is just back pressuring, saying, hey, I can't just take this traffic. Uh, and, and the main problem there being hash collisions uh, in your uplinks towards the spine. All right. Um, so uh, that's just on the traffic, right? Uh, uh, very simple. Now, let's uh, see how we can actually uh, translate that into uh, FX on, on, on AIML jobs, uh, right? Uh, so how do you uh, simulate an AIML job? Uh, what uh, we did here was uh, we uh, defined a job as a, a, a transaction, uh, right? You can pick one of the collectives, all to all or, or, or all reduced, right? We picked all to all because all to all is the most network intensive uh, uh, traffic uh, that happens when you uh, do AML training, right? Uh, so a job uh, consists of a set of hosts and each host is given a set amount of data to be transmitted across to the remote nodes. Every uh, host, in the job will transmit the exact same, almost the same amount of data to every other host in that particular job, right? So if you have a single job and you have all the hosts in the cluster part of the job, every host is actually exchanging or sending data to every other host in that particular job, right? So we did that to 
at, at different uh, uh, levels of jobs. One job uh, with all the hosts, two jobs where the hosts were divided into two, each job having you know half of the host, right? And all the way till 32 jobs uh, with uh, four hosts each. Uh, why did we do a varied uh, amount of jobs here? I mean, going forward, the, the, the scalability of these GPU networks is, is going to be so huge that it's going to be very unlikely that you're going to dedicate your whole of your uh, uh, GPU cluster just for one job, right? I mean, you could absolutely do that, but uh, the future is where you have these very large clusters and your multiple training jobs are going to happen or are going to be a run on it, which would be the optimal way. And when you run multiple of these jobs, how does it look uh, if you are running the same thing on Ethernet-based, uh, traditional ECMP-based network fabrics versus DSF, right? So the top right graph uh, table shows you uh, the comparison of the job completion time. Uh, uh, a job completion time is measured when all of the transactions get started, right? Uh, so all the hosts get started with transmitting the data across. And the completion of a job is when the last host receives its data or sends its data completely, right? Uh, so in ECMP, what you see is some hosts are at 100% of your uh, throughput, while some are at around 50% of the throughput. So as a result, the, the hosts that are stuck at 50% will slow down, and they won't complete their transmission of, of, of the data until they get their full uh, 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 share of the, of the network uh, for the transmission, right? So as a result, ECMP uh, slows down there. Uh, that reflects directly into your uh, job completion time as well. So if you look at a single job, uh, the schedule fabric and ECMP uh, look uh, pretty close. And as you increase your parallel jobs, you'll see that DSF uh, scales pretty linearly, stays consistent, uh, because there is no congestion uh, per se. You are spraying the packet across all the available links in all scenarios, right? Everything gets sent cleanly. While in ECMP, as you're increasing your jobs, and, and the number of hosts per job is slightly lower, right? The entropy of your flows changes. Uh, the number of flows will reduce and come, uh, become uh, lower, right? As you are increasing your jobs and your number of hosts per job is reducing. Uh, what that means is essentially uh, the lower the number of flows, the more collisions that's going to happen and, and, and ECMP just uh, runs into more problems. Uh, the bottom left, in the, in the same exact uh, 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 test where we were running the jobs, we took captures of the throughput. Uh, and in pretty much every case, DSF clearly uh, uh, shows better, better throughputs there. Uh, and in the uh, 32 by 4 uh, host scenario, it shows around 1.5 times better uh, bandwidth. Uh, so next steps, right? Uh, uh, clearly, I mean, this is just a start of our uh, uh, benchmarking process. Uh, we are not done here. Uh, more experiments are uh, in progress. Uh, we will be uh, running different traffic patterns. We'll be running different workloads. We do want to run with GPUs. Uh, so we are trying to build a cluster with uh, uh, GPUs in there. Uh, we are going to uh, uh, verify some of these numbers with uh, cable lengths as large as the 300 meters or so. Uh, we are going to uh, check with enhanced ECMP. The very first test was primarily done with the basic uh, ECMP, right? We are going to test this with enhanced ECMP uh, 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 and compare how it actually uh, looks uh, in comparison with the uh, scheduled fabric. And then as Mani was saying, uh, we are looking to uh, upstream uh, all of the work uh, that has been done in order to uh, develop this uh, technology. Yeah, that's about it. All right, thank, thank you. you.